Greetings Hunters! In this video we'll be discussing the best ways to deal with Master Rank Lunastra's moves. As always, I've provided timestamps in the description below, so feel free to skip to any move you'd wish to see directly. Also, for easy reference, I've categorized the moves into the following. Lunastra normally does this roar at the very beginning of a hunt, or whenever she goes into rage mode. To dodge this roar, you can time your roll just before Lunastra throws her arms upwards. Lunastra does this roar to raise the current level of her blue dust aura. To dodge this roar, time your roll around a split second after she lifts her arms up after a wiggle animation. Lunastra has two variations of the claw swipe. One is faster and the other is slower but has longer range. Avoiding them is as simple as keeping your distance away from the swipe. The faster version can be iframed by dodging to any direction. The slower version can only be iframed by dodging through the attack, as it does have a small amount of lingering hitboxes. Before doing this move, Lunastra will always turn her back to you. This should give you a good indication that she's about to do this move next. During this attack, her tail covers a huge area of effects starting from her back legs to her tail. Fortunately for us, this means that all the areas in front of the area of effect are all safe zones. This leaves her arms and head very open and this would be a good time to chip in some strong counterattacks. If you find yourself out of position, dodge to the right. That way the second tail swipe's hitbox will miss you. The hitbox on this move is massive and extends up to the base of the tail. For this reason, do not try to roll through her pelvis. Instead, once you see her turn, move around her back legs and then counter accordingly. Lunastra also does a quicker single tail swipe. Unlike the double tail swipe, she only does this move if you are already behind her. This move is very fast and doesn't give you a lot of openings so you must iframe this by dodging through the attack. This move can be easily identified when you see Lunastra gathering momentum in the air. This is easily avoidable by strafing to the side. Lunastra leaves herself momentarily open after doing this move so it is advisable to immediately counter with a quick attack. This move has a deceptively long range because other than the face being a huge hitbox, it also counts the fire effect as a hitbox as well. The main problem in this is that while the visual fire effect lags behind the head movement, the fire hitbox is actually fixed in front of Lunastra's mouth. What this means is that you're actually getting hit by the invisible hitbox way before the visual fire effect reaches your hunter. Also, Lunastra's arms and neck become soft hitboxes as they can cause your hunter to trip when hit. With this understanding, 
The simplest way to avoid getting hit is by not being in front of Blue Nostra. When estimating the safe distance, one should also consider the invisible hitbox. Also, by knowing that the arms and neck are soft hitboxes, we can prevent getting tripped by simply doing attacks. Attacking gives your hunter a temporary flinch free, meaning it doesn't prevent damage but it prevents being tripped. It's also good to know that you can iframe through the bite, but only from Lunastra's right side. The left side has lingering hitboxes. And most important of all, this move can ignite blue puddles. All moves that I'll be discussing here on out have the capacity to ignite blue puddles. What's important to understand is the flame explosion that follows will always be blowing away from the trigger source. In this case, the fire in Lunastra's mouth. During the attack, the head and chest become active hitboxes. Lunastra slides into the direction of the foreleg that she is raising. One way to evade this is by simply strafing to the opposite side of the slide. Dodging to the side is also an option. The forelegs and the hind legs do not have hitboxes during this attack. If you are out of position, you can iframe through by aiming through the legs. You can take advantage of this move's recovery animation and add in some quick attacks. But be careful of the lingering hitboxes. If you see fire in Lunastra's mouth, there is still an active hitbox. This move also triggers blue puddles. During this attack, Lunastra's whole body becomes an active hitbox. You can either strafe or dodge to the side to avoid this move. It is possible to roll through this move but only at the beginning of the animation. This move also ignites blue puddles. This attack is very straightforward and easy to evade. Only the visible stream of fire is an active hitbox. Simply make sure that your hunter is not in the line of sight of the fire attack. The most important thing to note is that this leaves Lunastra extremely vulnerable, and as such, you must capitalize with your strongest attacks. This move is very similar to the previously discussed Fire Bite. The main difference is that this has a longer wind-up animation and that there is an added diagonal wall of fire as seen here. Do not be fooled into thinking that the hitbox for this move would be something like this. In reality, it looks more like this. The best way to avoid this move would be to move out of the area of effect once you see Lunastra do the wind-up animation. There is a very tight opening for some quick counter-attacks if you are bold enough to attempt that. There are also some really tight safe spots in between the left shoulder and neck and behind the right foreleg. The easiest way to avoid this move is to simply move away. However, the most efficient way to evade this move would be to actually clutch onto Lunastra's limbs.
During this attack, the active hitboxes are Lunastra's face and the Stream of Fire. Additionally though, the forelegs, the neck, and the chest are soft hitboxes. As previously mentioned, soft hitboxes do not knock you down, they only trip you. More on that later. The safest way to evade this move would be to keep your distance. You can also position yourself on Lunastra's left side to avoid getting hit completely. You can iframe roll through this move as long as you keep a good distance away. If you're in a bad position on Lunastra's left side, try dodging towards the space between her neck and left foreleg. There is a small safe space there but it is rather tricky to get into. On the other hand, if you get caught on the right side, you can avoid getting damaged by forcing a trip. As mentioned earlier, the forelegs and the neck causes a trip instead of a knockdown. Try aiming your dodges towards either of these. And of course, all forms of breath attacks will ignite blue flame puddles. Full disclaimer, I'd like to make it perfectly clear that the best way to deal with this move is by equipping at least Wind Resistance Level 3. This effectively nullifies the wind effect and instead of trying to dodge the move, you can instead capitalize on doing counterattacks. With that said though, I will still provide the necessary actions in case wind resistance is not equipped. There are two variations of the wing flap. One is pushing wind to the front and the other is pushing wind sidewards. Although quite difficult, both can still be iframed. As these are minor wind pressures, doing normal attacks during the wind pressure would actually nullify their effect. Moving away from the area of effect is also a simple but effective solution. Wing flaps also ignite blue flames. This move covers a very large area in front of Lunastra. One thing to note is that the farther you are from Lunastra, the more damage she will take. With this understanding, if you are close, you must roll closer. Take note that all areas under and behind Lunastra are safe zones. If you're close enough, it's also possible to iframe through this move. And finally, one good way to counter this move is to utilize your Clutch Claw. As long as you're close enough, clutching onto the monster will grant you wind resistance and you'll also be unaffected by the damage sticks. The timing is quite tight, however, and you'll need to be really close in order to pull this off. Stay away from the blue flames as these also get ignited. With Wind Resistance level 5, you gain full resistance and you can instead concentrate on counterattacks.
the supernova is Lunastra's deadliest move. This is mainly because hunters without wind resistance will be flinched for quite a while. Furthermore, all blue puddles get randomly ignited. The perfect scenario requires the hunter to dodge the roar, superman dive at the last possible moment, and then proceed to avoid all blue flame puddles littered around the map. If you dive too early, you'll get flinched. If you dive too late, you also get flinched. And, if you fail to dodge the roar, you may not have enough time to sheath your weapon. If you can't do the perfect supernova dodge, then the next most efficient way would be to equip Wind Resistance level 5. And I'm sure that most of you didn't want to hear that solution. And apparently, there is another way. Yes, hunters, you can use the Clutch Claw to effectively nullify the initial wind pressure from Lunastra. The timing is extremely tight, and you must be at very close proximity, but it is very doable. 